I'm Dr. Marty Matlock. The Dairy Sustainability Framework Approach to Continuous Improvement considers additional frameworks and sustainability initiatives around the world and has adopted this approach because it is the most adaptive to change and the most considerate of the differences in production practices around the world. So strategies for sustainability programs typically can be categorized as threshold compliance frameworks, incremental uh, compliance frameworks, or continuous improvement frameworks. DSF has adopted the continuous improvement frameworks. Let's talk about the other two as well. Compliance criteria are established by some authority in a, a threshold compliance framework with some regulatory market access or other governmental authority or other authority defining what is in compliance and what is not for uh, some sort of certification. The most common in the United States and around the world would be an organic production certification, for example, or fair trade or similar types of certifications. Participants are subject to audits for compliance and either pass or fail the criteria. Incremental frameworks typically have tiers of performance where participants are ranked and certified based upon their performance across those tiers. However, continuous improvement frameworks um, is, are really what are used across most agricultural, regional, or national programs because uh, they're most effective at engaging all producers wherever they are and moving them forward. Let's talk about a few examples. In a compliance certification framework, if you have some metric on the y-axis that you want to improve with 100 being good over time, what you would do is establish a compliance threshold, a minimum acceptable performance threshold. This minimum acceptable performance level represents the in or out boundary. If you're above this threshold, then you're in. If you're below this threshold, then you're out. It typically um, disadvantages small or poor producers because of the criteria for even a, a valuation or assessment can be quite costly. Similarly, threshold compliance approaches typically have tiers, and each of those tiers have different levels of performance, and they can move performance forward. So an organization can enter as a tier one performer, say a platinum or a, a silver performer or a one star performer, and can move to two stars and three stars, or from silver to gold to platinum, for example. There are numbers of, of organizations that use this tiered approach, and it represents a way to inventory existing performance across the population where you can have 30% of all the producers are tier three and 70% are tier two or tier one, for example. And then the goal could be to move more to tier two or tier three. A continuous improvement approach actually uh, starts with some benchmark of performance across average, usually across all folks who are producing a particular product in a region or a, even a, around the world at a given time and ask what can we do over time to make those better and how can we assess these things and make them better to make everybody better over time. And that's what we have adopted with the Dairy Sustainability Framework. And this is the most do uh, dominant form of, of sustainability framework around the world. The reason is because it allows us to move the curve. For example, if we take the amount of soil erosion for soybeans on a given year, this happens to be 2010. You can see that most of the soybeans, most of the soybean producers, and this is in the U.S., actually have very low erosion rates, but a few have very high eroding fields. If we want to make soybean producers better by reducing soil erosion, we focus on those who have the highest eroding fields. In a certification program, all of these producers on the left-hand side of this x-axis would be certified. They would, and so you would have 80% of so U.S. soybean producers, or 95 even percent, would be below the average in some cases. But we have a whole lot of producers, um, a, a few producers, I'm sorry, who have a whole lot of erosion. And you want to make those better to make everybody better. This is what Jason Clay of the World Wildlife Fund calls moving the curve. We move the curve by targeting best management practices where the problems exist, and we make the the system better across the entire continent or around the world for everybody. This is consistent with the DSF model. The DSF model is a framework that includes a global layer offering an overarching sustainability vision, 
It includes regional local layers, which allows for prioritization of issues that are important in those regions. So you start with performance milestones at the regional level, existing indicators. You have a plan of improvement, which is a continuous improvement process to plan, do, check, and adjust with global categories, strategic intents, and enablers. And that leads to this entire improvement, upward movement of the dairy sustainability industry or the dairy industry around the world. Everybody gets better. This approach has been um, captured in the SAFA guidelines for the, for the FAO, as well as in the ASABE 629 sustainability standard in the United States, the continuous improvement framework for sustainable agriculture, where you define, plan, and, bench, and implement your, your approach to improvement. This approach creates um, opportunities for improvement across the entire supply chain and allows for documentation and iterative improvement at the regional and local level where people know best how to make things better, how to solve problems. This has been a brief overview of sustainability uh, frameworks for, uh, for agriculture and the continuous improvement approach adopted by the Dairy Sustainability Framework. Thank you.